and we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but he talked about the story of the prodigal. And he, he read the verse and he focused on something a little bit different, but that dad, before the son could ever say anything, dad saw him coming. Because dad was looking for him. And can I tell you today, in God's presence as we've worshipped and as we've prayed, His presence has been in this place and He's been looking for you. He's been waiting for you to come down the road. He's watched for a long time. Every day is today the day. Is today the day. And today may be the day you make the decision to come back home. But Dad's been looking for a long time for you to get here. So don't worry about what you find when you get there. You've got a God, just like Brother Jonathan said, that is saying, we've got that covered. If you're walking back, enough is said. Let's go ahead and put a ring on him. That's his identity, where he stamps his identity on every paper that he signs. Let's put a good robe on him, and let's kill the fatted calf. It's time to celebrate. That's what Dad's saying today. Your heavenly Father is saying that for you. He's watching and He's looking. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you never go to church or if you're at church every time the doors are open. You've got a dad that's looking for you today. A heavenly Father that's seeking you and He wants that relationship. He's seeking you and I'm thankful for that. One more time, can we lift our hands to Him and say thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for your kindness to me. Thank you today for your mercy. Thank you for your long-suffering with me today, God. You've been good to me, and I thank you, Jesus. And you can be seated. We'll, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a warning, and thank you to our worship team today for escorting us again into the presence of the Lord. God's been good to us. I like being able to be in His presence, because there are things that happen in the presence of the Lord. And as we sang that song, that's an old hymn. I know you know it. We don't, I don't know all of the verses. But growing up singing that song, I'm convinced, I thought as we were singing it, I'm, I'm convinced that if we can get that song in here, everything else will fall into place. If we realize He's a great God and He's worthy of our praise and then we just give Him everything that we have, it'll fall into place. Happy Father's Day to all of you. I hope you have a good day, whether you're a father or whether you're not. We're going to celebrate, we are going to celebrate fathers. and. We've got some stuff we'll do at the end of the service, but we're going to celebrate, also just celebrate men in general. I know, right? <laughs> what? You mean we're supposed to do that? I know, I know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people good things. They may, they may need to listen to this at home. It may be good if they're not here today. <laughs> they listen at home where they can vent a little bit. Yeah, we're going to celebrate men. Men, it's a good thing, Right? Yeah, it is a good thing. It's a good thing. And uh, I know the Bible doesn't have a verse in it that says that she that findeth a husband findeth a good thing. But it's still true anyway. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you've got a good man in your life, it's a good thing. Uh, anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Thank you for your prayers for us. We're glad to be home safe and sound. And I'm glad to be out of an airplane. And I'm glad to not have a COVID test scheduled for a while. We have in the last two weeks taken one, two, three, four, five, four, five, four or five, I can't even count, COVID test. And we're even offered a chance to buy fake results a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know about all of that good stuff, but. We did get tested. We did make it out. We got our results about an hour and a half before we were supposed to leave for the airport. So the mercies of God were with us, and we can tell you a little bit more about all that later, uh, fortunately. And help me pray about you. Help me pray about this. Y'all know like two years ago we were going to go to Gambia, right? And my vacation schedule didn't work, didn't accommodate it. The next year, COVID, okay, so we couldn't go then. So this year it finally opened up, and would you believe that Blake's uh, soccer coach and um, math teacher at Dyersburg High School, which is a Muslim man from Gambia, just so happens 
He flew into Gambia two days before we did. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, he lives in Jackson, teaches here. Hmm. Hmm. So we'll see what happens. Y'all pray about that. Who knows what's going to happen with that, with that situation. We got to hang out with him about four or five days out of our trip. Got to, he took us to different places, showed us some of his country, but had some good conversation as people. And uh, no, we didn't get into the book yet, but we're making friends, right? We're making friends, so we'll see. We're going to see what's happening. He's a great man. Listen, he is. For those of you who have had him or know him, Musa is an incredible individual. And uh, hearing his story about how he made it here, his determination, and what he—and it was nothing. He wasn't braggadocious. It was I had to—I had to prod him and ask him questions. But to have uh, that kind of man in our lives, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what God does. There are a couple of churches over there too that we found. Um, this was a different trip for us, and again, I'm not going to give it all to you, but I, I just want you to pray for a couple of folks, too. Um, different when you go and visit another country, and there's a missionary there, and they have your agenda planned, and they have the people that you're going to meet, and they're gonna, they, they know where you're going to go, and you don't have to worry about all that, and they get you into the hotel, and you just you just go right along. Uh, that was not this trip. That was not this trip. Uh, there's some things, looking back, that were comical and not so comical when they were going on, but uh, when you just get dropped into a a capital, or not a capital city, but a, a big city, and you have no contact. You're there. And so we took off, and so we were I was able to be in service both Sundays, uh, one in a city church and one in a village church. And I'm telling you what, I was sharing with Brother Steve, 29-year-old young man under a mango tree, pre, and we had no clue. I don't, I'm going to talk to Brother Sully. I don't know that he knows that that church is there. But this young man preached. Uh, it, despite the goat, despite the sheep, the, uh, the cow, the chicken, the dog, the pig, and the uh, lizard that passed through the, the church while we were having service. So it didn't bother them, so I didn't let it bother me. We just had, we just had church, but the young man preached. So I, I wish you would remember those two churches, um, that God would uh, bless them and draw them even closer to him but let his will be done in those situations so, because I don't think it was happenstance that we found them particularly. So let's pray for them. Again, continue to remember our pastor and that church today. God needs to touch them. They, they need the help of Almighty God in their lives. Let's pray for them and remember them as we go. Today we're here to celebrate dads. It is a good thing to be a man. It's a good thing to be a man. So let's pray and ask the anointing of the Word of God or anointment on our ears, in my mouth today, that God would speak to us through his word, and that God would do what he wants to do us in here, do with us in here, and we're going we're gonna to celebrate what God has done. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful for your kindness. Thank you for your love and your mercy. I thank you because we have had the privilege already to be in your presence, to feel the touch of our heavenly Father. We thank you for what today means. We thank you for the fathers that are in our lives, for the men that are in our lives that bring such value to us. I pray, Lord, that your anointing and your blessing would rest over each and every one of them. I pray that you would help them with their insecurities. I pray that you would help build them up. I pray that you would look deep into their hearts today. God, help them to know that you love them and that you are seeking after them to bless them with every blessing that you have for those that would follow after you. God, help us to please you in everything we, we, that we do. Anoint this time that we have in the remainder of today's service. Draw us each and every one closer to you. Help us to bring you glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Good to be a man. Good to be a man. We need to uh, we need to have manly men in our lives. I shouldn't have to be redundant, right? Shouldn't have to say manly men. You ought to be able to just say men. That's what a man is. I am deeply disturbed at a society and a world that uses the term toxic masculinity. It's a lie. Toxic masculinity is a lie. Let me be clear. It is a lie from the pits of hell that come against what the Word of God says about being a man. You are not deficient because you're a man, and you're not deficient 
or toxic because you're masculine. That's the way God created us to fulfill a certain role. I know what they're meaning to an extent. But what they've done is once they coin the term, then they can use the term loosely to attack what is not negative. Because you can attack certain men, men who do things that are toxic, call it toxic masculinity, and then you've got the word toxic attached to masculinity in order to make us dissolve and disperse what God intended a man to be. Okay? So toxic and masculinity, I don't use them together. If it's toxic, it's not masculinity. It may be committed by a man, but it's not manly. If he's a punk and has to beat up on a woman, he's not a man. If it's toxic, he's not leading his family like the Word of God says. If it's toxic, he's not supporting. He's not taking care of. He's not doing what this book said. He's not a man. So I'm disturbed when our world tries to say it's toxic masculinity because there are men that do things that are not right, that are wrong, that sin according to this book. And so they can latch on to some of that and use it to break down all of masculinity and men and what the Word of God says we're supposed to be. Okay? We can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We've got to be right according to the book. We need men. It's good to be a man. It's good to do masculine things. It's good to fish. It's good to play golf. It's good to play football even. It's all right if you get a little bruised up. You'll be okay. It'll, it'll, it's just, what I say, <laughs> pain is just weakness leaving the body. I'm not signing up. <laughs> Maybe it's good to watch football a little bit. How about that? You know, just yell at the TV or whatever you got to do. It's manly. Just do a little bit of that. You need to be a man. Something. That may not be your thing. Whatever it is, be a man. Be a man. We need men. People are looking for good men, right? Looking for good men. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Let me read you, read to you about, about someone looking for a good man. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Your adversary, the devil, is looking for a good man. A good man that he can consume. A good man that he can devour. Consume is a nice word, right? It has a little consume. It's nice. And devour to me, just says it's a little bit more violent, right? That's what Satan's looking for. He's looking to devour, seeking whom he can devour, who can he, who he can destroy, who he can tear up, who he can break down. He's looking for a good man that he can just absolutely get on the inside of your head, get on the inside of your heart, and kill you. That's what he's looking for. Your enemy, your adversary, the devil, is looking to destroy good men, good fathers, good men who may not be fathers, but men. I told you we were going to focus a little bit more on men, whether you're a father or not. Because one, you may be someday, and secondly, you are leading somebody. We need men as leaders, whether you're a father or not. That's why we're celebrating manhood. Because it covers dads, but it includes everybody. We need every man to be a good man. But you can't be ignorant, put your head in the sand, and not realize that your enemy, your adversary, the devil, is seeking to devour you. He wants to get on the inside of your head. 
He wants to get on the inside of your heart. He wants to draw you away of your own lust. He wants to bring you to a place to make you feel like you're insufficient. He wants to work on your fears. He wants to work on the things that you feel insecure about. That's what he wants to do so he can get in and destroy you and tell you you cannot be what God has called you to be. But it's a lie. And like I said before, one of the things that he is using is terminology like toxic masculinity and blurring of genders. We're taking manhood out of the picture. And that's a bad thing. Bad men need to be changed. But that does not make manhood negative. We need good men, but Satan's looking for them. And a cancel culture that we see today is doing a really good job of making good men sit down and shut up. People still with me? I won't be, I won't, that I know of, I won't be preaching next week. I'll give you a week at least to get over it. But it's trying to destroy what God has built. When we don't understand manhood, we don't, we don't understand biblical roles. When we don't understand manhood, we can't understand fatherhood. When we don't understand manhood, we don't understand a marriage. And when we break down marriages and we break down family relationships of father and child, if we're willing to watch that break down over nothing, why are we celebrating today? What are we doing here? We're going to celebrate Father's Day, but we're going to break down the father? Give me a break. Corporate America will break down the man, but they'll sell you a Father's Day card. Don't try to sell me a Father's Day card if you're not going to celebrate a father. There's some other things I could, I could, some directions that just bother me about the way our society tells men, you're going to be responsible for a child. But you have no say in whether or not that child is born. That's an issue. Neither is it good for men, men to walk away from your responsibility. You've got a responsibility. If you made a family, you need to take care of your family. And that's going away. That's good. People, aren't, we're not holding a lot of responsibilities. And, so, and we're not consistent across the board. We want... Men to be responsible over here, but have no, no say over here. You, you can't play both sides. We've got to have men. And this is what the enemy is doing. Your adversary, the devil, is walking around seeking, who can I tear up today? Who can I destroy today? How can I destroy man? Because here's what happens. When we destroy manhood, we destroy fatherhood. And when we don't understand fatherhood, we don't understand how Jesus is relating to us. Right? He says, I'm your father. So if we have a skewed idea of what a father is, then we're going to have a difficult time understanding who Jesus should be to us. And that's why homes that get torn apart, we've got to, we've got to fight for our families, and we have to fight for our children, and we have to fight for the things that are valuable according to this word, because this does not change. Society is trying to change and they're celebrating all this change. And that doesn't mean we have to stay the same way we always were. We've got to be right. But we don't step outside of this book. But when men don't do what they're supposed to do, then you have men like my dad who suffered through a situation where his dad walked out on them. And I watched as through his life, he had some insecurities. I didn't notice it then, didn't understand it then, but I get it now to an extent. I understand why he fought with some insecurities. Why? Because he wasn't worth his dad hanging around. Why should he be confident in who he is? And so then we expect somebody to trust their heavenly father and come to a relationship with Him, why would they trust a heavenly father? I've seen what earthly fathers do. Because somebody's not being a man. 
I know I'm all over the place this morning, but you just got to stick with me and stay with it. I hope in all of this, what are you saying where you don't know where I've come from? You don't know what I've had to deal with. No, I don't. I don't. And I'm sorry if you have dealt with some of these things in your life. I really am. And I hope, I hope if you've, if you've been abused in family situations, and I mean, in, in any way, form, shape, or fashion, if you've been abused, I pray the love of God stays consistent enough with you that he fights through the insecurities that you may face because of things that have happened to you before. That's what he's here for. He's here to heal. He, he, he's, and, and, and I can tell you, all I can do is tell you, you can either believe it or just hang around long enough till God proves it to you. But I'm telling you, give God a chance to heal you. Give God a chance to encourage you. Don't take your earthly father, if he has abused you, don't take his word for who you are. Take your heavenly father that created you, take his word for who you are, and let him bless your life. Stay with him. Stay with him. You need a real father in your life. Because your enemy is seeking who he can devour. And if he tricks you and abuses you long enough and lies to you enough and allows our men to suppose that masculinity really is toxic so I'm not going to do it anymore. What the enemy is trying to do to our world is take away an example of a loving God in their lives. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to remove any concept. Because see, I grew up, that same dad, that same dad that has his dad run around on his family and then walk away, that same dad did not do that to me. Okay, so again, don't tell me it can't be done. I'm not making light of what you've gone through, but it can still be done. I have proof. Okay, so my dad stayed home. My dad was a good man. He did what he was supposed to do. Was he perfect? I'm grown enough to know he was not. I know that. But what I do know is I never had to wonder where he was. And he lived his life raising his boys. He flipped the script by the help of a merciful God. And what I'm saying to you is that's possible for you as well today. But if you're not in that situation, men, wherever you are, protect that in your life. If you are a good man and you're being a good man, stick with it. You need to get even closer to God because there's a target on your back by society, by media, and by the end. It goes back to the ad, your adversary, the devil. There's a target on your back. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. You're going to have to protect yourself. I don't know how many of you here. I don't know what you do at home to protect your home. But whatever it is, I can guarantee you, if you're a man in here where you live, you're protected. Aren't you? You got your own way. You know about the locks on the door. You know about the security camera, cameras. And you know how many shots are in that clip. Because you're protecting people. There are people on the inside of your house that are worth protecting. And we do things to protect ourselves. And what I'm saying is protect your masculinity. Don't let toxic things in your life enter in and take what God wants you to have and be because he's got a calling for men. Not only is your adversary the devil seeking a good man, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 says this, I sought... For a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for that land that I should not destroy it. And I'm going to stop right there. Because the rest of that verse applies to someone else. Okay? By the faith of God, the rest of that verse does not apply in this room. God says, I'm looking for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. In other words, there's a wall around this land to protect it. There's a wall that keeps everything out, but in the wall was a gap. Now, if you're an adversary, what do you do with a gap? Luke 
you play football. You're a lineman. As an offensive lineman in a running game, what are you trying to do? Make what? Or what else? A gap. The job of that offensive line is to make a gap. Because if I make a gap, what happens? The running back runs through it, and we're going to run it down their throat. We're going to win this game if we can make a gap. But if you're on defense, what's your job? Fill the gap. Because if I can plug the gap, and I didn't know all this. I enjoyed football, but I didn't know all this, and he starts teaching me this stuff. He said, sometimes they will engage a man. And of course, you all realize how ignorant I am about this stuff when I say this. It is news to me. They will engage a man, and they're not even worried about making the tackle. They engage the man and then turn their rear end into the hole. Because it don't matter if I make the tackle or not. I'm just preventing him from coming right here. If he comes here, he's going to run into me. Fill the hole. Fill the gap. And God said, I was looking for a man. A man. I went and looked in the lexicon about the word for man. And you know what it said? A man, as opposed to a woman, she needs a man to stand in the gap. And say, not through here. You're not coming through here. The gap in the wall. I've got a wall, but there's a gap. I'm going to fill it. And you're not going to come through here. You got to come over me to get to them. The devil's seeking a man to destroy. Who can I tear up? Who can I destroy? And God's seeking a man to fill a gap. Where's the gap? In the wall around your own personal life. Who's going to fill the gap? Who's going to look at it and say, I heard some preaching that convicted my heart. I need to fill that gap. There's something going on in my family. I don't know if it's that bad or not, but I, I, I know this. It's leaving a gap where something might could come through. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fill this gap right here. Dad, decide that. Make that decision. Make that call. Fill the gap. Okay? Fill the gap. We need some men, good men to fill the gap. God's looking for you. God's looking for you. You say, I, I don't feel called. No, you are called. You are a good man. God, said, God didn't say, I need a preacher. He didn't say, I need a missionary. He didn't say, I need an apostle, an evangelist. He said, I need a man. I need a man to fill a gap. That's all God needs is a man. He says, I'll step in the gap and I'll fill it. Whatever comes this way, it's not happening. If I can stop, I don't, I don't feel strong. I don't feel, you, you know you don't feel strong. They're telling you it's toxic masculinity. And then your enemy's saying, you're weak. You can't do it. You've failed before. You've sinned before. You know that. You know you keep falling victim to the same thing time after time after time after time. That's you. That's who you are. You think you're going to stand in the gap and stop me? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand in the gap. God will stop you if I'll stand in the gap. God just needs somebody to stand. Stand. Plant your feet and don't move. I've told it before, but Jeff, I'm going to pick on you this morning. We were high school, in high school. We used to play a lot of basketball. It's been so long ago. You high schoolers now don't even know what I'm thinking, talking about. Down where, is it the Y now? It's the Y now. There's a building that's not even there. There was a building. What, it, it's not there now. It was condemned. The floor was falling in. We used to funnel, other teams would come play us, we would funnel them to certain spots on that floor because we knew the floor was so dead that a good basketball, when you dribbled, it stopped. It would not bounce. I'm telling the truth. I'm not exaggerating at all. And they would drive, we would drive them to that point, and they would dribble that ball, and they'd go to make the next move, and we're laughing, picking the ball up, going another way, because we knew once they got there, we got them. And so we were playing in that old decrepit gym, and Brother Jeff, he was on our team and everything, so we were playing, I believe it's one of them Holmes, Michael Holmes maybe, and of course, Jeff's no weak dude. He, 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 we don't have to worry about whether or not he's a man, right? And, and Michael was the same way. And one night, it's supposed to be a little pickup game. And, man, those two dudes were on each other, and they were banging and hitting each other. And, I mean, just, it, it was rough. It was rough. These, you, these little foul, these little sissy ball game ball players now, uh-uh. They wouldn't have survived. 
They got to banging against each other, and Jeff was set for a rebound. And Michael come through and hit him, and I mean, if you don't clear him out, you're going to have to bring your lunch, right? Michael hit him and just blew Jeff away. And I, I remember, I got bug-eyed. I was like, oh, man, I've never seen Jeff. Jeff don't get moved like that. What just happened? He went in there, and I said, man, what happened? He didn't tell me what happened. He did not answer my question. All he said was, if he does that again, he's going to have to wrinkle this floor. That was his answer. And the next time we came down, Jeff planted, and Michael came in and hit him, and he didn't move. Mike, he knocked Michael. I don't know. I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm staying outside. I'm shooting threes this game because I am not going down there with those two. They finally stopped the game, but Jim Davis was kind of there chaperoning things, and he made a, he made a stop. I mean, they were just hooked. But Jeff made a statement. When he made that statement, I thought, that's what it's like to stand in the gap. That's what we got to do. I don't know. I may not know everything. I mean, but God's looking for a man to stand in the gap and say, if you're going to move me, you're going to have to wrinkle this floor. That's what God's looking for. Just a man to stand in the gap. The devil is seeking you today, men. He's coming for you. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. The devil is coming for you. He's trying to change society and society's view of who you are. I don't care what he's trying to do. You've got to stay in the word. You've got to stay right. You've got to stay in the book. I don't care how countercultural it is. You've got to stay in the book. I don't care how unpopular it is. Stay in the book. It's the only truth you're ever going to have. And if what you're wanting, if what you're wanting is peace, if what you're wanting is to protect your family, if what you're wanting is to be used by God in his kingdom, you are going to have to be a man. You have to be a man. And so I challenge you with that. I challenge you with that. God's looking for you. Just like your enemy is looking to destroy you, God's look, looking to bless you. And he's going to do it as you stand in the gap. He's looking to bless your family. He can bless your family if you'll stand in the gap. He's saying, I need a man to stand in the gap so I can bless all of them. I need this man to stand in the gap to stand up for something so I can bless his family, so I can bless his workplace, so I can bless his church, so I can bless his community. God wants to bless everybody around you, but he destroyed, if you read on. Remember I told you we're not going to read that second part because it didn't apply to us? Well, this doesn't apply to us by faith, amen? But it said, but I found none. I didn't find a man. I couldn't find a man to stand in the gap for those that he was protecting. And so what happened? God poured out his indignation on them. Because not a man would stand in the gap. God didn't say a perfect man. He didn't say a man that's got it all together. He didn't say a man that knows everything and is educated and has his history in the church and has no faults. That's not what he said. He said, I looked for a man. So Satan's looking for a man he can destroy. God's looking for a man that will stand in the gap. So either way today, men, you're wanted. In the middle of a society that says that you're not wanted. That's why I said it's a lie. You are wanted. But you're wanted by two different entities. And today you're going to have to choose the right one. So here's what we're going to do today to close. I would like for Sister Amy, Sister Jane, Andrea, Sister Lindsay, these are some of the leaders, the lady leaders in our church. I would like you to come. Come on, me up here on the platform. Men, we do not do what we do alone. And the Bible gives us, the Bible gives us instruction, and God's got a plan for family. He does. Men, we got to lead. We got to be willing to stand in the gap. But we can't do it by ourselves. We're not going to. We don't have to. The reason I ask these ladies to come up here is God has a mandate also for our ladies. We celebrated you guys a month or so ago, right? And we're still celebrating you. We thank you for who you are and for what you what you're doing. These are leaders in our our church, but we're asking all of you women to do this for us men. And what I would like to do as 
first of all, I'm going to ask Sister Amy to take about a minute to talk to you ladies about how you can help us men and the important role that you play. We lead. We stand in the gap, but we can't do it alone. We need you to help us. Just like the enemy is destroying, trying to destroy our men and, and their manhood, I feel the enemy tries to attack women and femininity and, and make it weak, like we're weaking, we're weakling. But God has really been dealing with me of late of my role as a wife and as a mother, and that is a prayer covering over our men. Never, ever, ever have our men needed us to cover us in prayer. We're not called to stand in the gap. That's, that's what our husbands do. That's what our fathers do. But we are called to be that covering over our husbands and our fathers and our men in this society. And we do that on our knees. There's no other way. I look back at my grandmother. Many of you remember, and it just seemed like the minute service started, that, that woman was out walks in the aisles. And, and I realize now it's because she stayed, Sister Dina and I have talked about this, in a just a constant spirit of prayer. If you would go her by her house, she'd be washing dishes and praying. If she she might be sweeping and she she had that spirit of prayer. And more than ever, ever, ladies, God is not calling us to look like men, to act like men, to full to fulfill the role of a man. But he's calling us to a in my opinion a more powerful role and that's to cover our husbands in prayer. They need us. They need our prayers. I don't have time to go into all of it, um, but God has shown me a lot of things. There's some, um, actually some messages and books that these other ladies have recommended, but our role as women are to, you know, you might not have a husband. You might not have a father even. You might not have a godly husband that's leading your home. Pray for him. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen it happen. I could tell you stories, miraculous stories, of men that, that there's stories here that of men that said I'm not doing that I'm not I'm not doing all that crazy stuff and they are mighty warriors they're standing in the gap for their families now so don't give up if you don't if your husband is not a godly husband if you don't have a husband if you don't have a father pray for these young these young dads because they need it they need our prayers and I'm encouraging all of you ladies we're have a time of prayer to cover these men in our prayers. That's the very most important thing that we can do. That being said, I'd like all of our men, if you would, join me in the front. Any man, join me in the front, especially if you're, especially if you're, if you're, I would say anything, anybody from a youth class forward, from Revolution Youth, all the men join me here. These are the, these are the targets of our adversary. The men you see in the front of this church this morning are the targets of our adversary. It's what Satan's trying to destroy. It's what our society is trying to destroy. Men, we need you to stand in the gap. You're not always going to get it right. But if you'll just give your best every time. When you fall down, Look, falling down does not mean you change direction. Doesn't mean you change direction. The enemy would try to tell you, see, you failed. No, you didn't fall. You're still going the same direction. You just failed. You didn't turn around. You failed. If you fall, get back up. There's going to be another man that's going to offer his, his arm, his shoulder. He's going to wrap his arms around you. He's, he's, it's going to be, it's going to be, a, there, there's somebody that's coming to get you, Right? There's a hacksaw ridge where somebody's going to get you. We're going to come get you. We're going to get you out of here. We're going to work together. Don't quit. Don't give up and don't be fooled by the enemy. But ladies, if you would stand right now, we're going to promise to stand in the gap for you. And we're asking you to promise to cover us in prayer. So with that, I'm going to ask Sister Jane, if she would, to lead us in a prayer. Lead you ladies in a prayer. And I want you to stretch your arms out over these men, and I want you to pray. A covering of protection over us, over our hearts, 
over our minds, over our souls, over our spirit, that God would keep us in the word, keep us encouraged as men, give us the courage and the strength to stand in the gap for you, and let's let the plan of God take effect in a world that wants to destroy it. Let's let the will of God be done. Sister Jane. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this word that you have spoken to us this morning. We thank you for each one of these men, God, the leaders in our church, Lord Jesus, a hedge of protection and covering over them, them, Lord Jesus, as they lead us into this next section of our um, family as a church, Lord Jesus, God, that you would be over each one of our families, God, our husbands and our fathers, Lord Jesus, that you would lead and direct them, hallelujah, give them the strength to stand in the gap, God, Lord Jesus, give them the strength to stay in your word, to stay on their knees in prayer for us, God, hallelujah, Jesus, God, that you, you would strengthen our families, and by starting with our families and our husbands and our wives, God, that you would give them the strength to love you more and to show us who you are, Abba Father, God, thank you, Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power, God, I thank you, Jesus, for the example that you've given them in your word, God. I thank you, Jesus, for each lady here, God, that you would use her if she has a husband that is not here, Lord Jesus, or has, has a husband here. Lord Jesus, that she would continue to pray or covering over that husband, that he will be a godly man, that he will be an example for you, for you in this world, God. Thank you, Jesus, for the direction of this church body, God. I thank you, Jesus, for the direction of this church family, for the direction of my family, God. I thank you, Jesus, for your love and your mercies that are new every morning, God. I thank you, Jesus, for each man that's here, God, that you would give them a feeling of, of integrity and just to stick with you, Jesus. Stick through it all, Lord Jesus, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for the presence that's here right now, God. I thank you, Jesus, for your love, God. I thank you, Jesus, for the works that you're doing in each one of these men's lives, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, from the youngest one to the oldest one, God. I thank you, Jesus, for you are mighty and greatly to be praised, God. You are both worthy of all praise and honor. Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence, and we thank you, Lord, that you will be with each one of them as they leave here today, God, that they would continue to stand in the gap, to stand in the gap for me, to stand in the gap for my child, to stand in the gap for my children, to stand in the gap for each one of these ladies that's in this room, God. I thank you, Jesus, God, you are worthy. Thank God for his plan. Thank God for the ladies that cover us in prayer. Thank God for men, real men, who are willing to walk in the word, who are willing to put themselves in before a God that's able to do all things. And let's rebuke any doubt in their mind, any fear, any time the enemy comes against them, telling them they can't be what God's calling them to be. Let's rebuke that and thank God for the deliverance that they can find the encouragement they can find in the presence of the Lord. Lord, we thank you today for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, God. I thank you for the men that stand in the front of this room today. I thank you, God, for the prayers that Sister Jane and these ladies have prayed over us. I pray, Lord, that you would hear their faith. God, I pray that you would hear their voice. I pray, God, that you would walk with these men every single day with this covering over them and knowing that their God sees every step that they're taking. Lead and God and direct them. And, Lord, I pray that you would tear down every lie that's told about them. Let them understand and know that their manhood is something that you've blessed them with and that you are going to use to bring glory and honor to their families and to their communities because they walk with you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us men. Thank you, God, for what you're doing to bless us and use us in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God's good and plan's perfect. So thank you, men, for being at the front of this church today. And I want to encourage you as fathers, as grandfathers, maybe great-grandfathers, or to be fathers, husbands, you're a man today. It's not just about dads. We're celebrating Father's Day, but it's not just about dads. It's about being a man. So I want to encourage you, always be a man. Be a man. Be a man. And if you've got a brother next to you and you notice that he's struggling, support him. Help him out. We're not going into battle alone. No soldier left behind. We're going to take care of one another and then let God be in us what he wants us to be. Can we give these men a round of applause for what they contribute to our church, to our society, to our families? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for being my example. Thank you for being my support. I appreciate you. You can be seated.
for just a few more moments. Sister Jane, while they are being seated, do you mind telling us about what you have up here for everybody? <laughs> 